a graphic that shows us how LCA works, right? So this black box is like the system we are considering. Any system, whether it's an automobile, a pencil, uh, or an electric toaster, or a jet engine, right? You have inputs, raw materials, and then you have energy. Energy can be uh, in the form of uh, electrical energy. In uh, earlier days, it was, you know, biomass, you're burning wood or what have you uh, to pro produce heat. Uh, in thermal power plants, we burn coal, but some form of energy nonetheless, right? And then raw materials. If it's an automobile, you need lots of raw materials. You need sheet metal, uh, you may need plastic material, uh, you may need electrical material. So typically all processes have these inputs. Uh, and inside is where raw material acquisition starts. Uh, so that's the first step in the process. Uh, and so that's included as part of this black box or the system. The next step is manufacturing. And it, you may have several stages of manufacturing. Then we get into a use stage. The product, depending on what it is, if it's a Stauffer's spaghetti and meatballs, the, you know, the, the use period is probably uh, a matter of months from when you buy to you, when, when you actually consume the product. If it's an automobile, maybe a decade or more. And then ultimately, uh, it, we get to the end of the life where you, know, you have to recycle or otherwise dispose. Now, what comes out of this black box as a consequence in addition to the product are you have atmospheric emissions. You may burn stuff. Uh, you may have other kinds of processes that let gaseous emissions. You know, it could be carbon dioxide. It could be oxides of nitrogen, sulfur, etc. Waterborne emissions. You, you know, you, you, there are multiple cleaning steps. There are coolants being used. These emissions may contain uh, material that may be harmless, harmful, like mercury, lead, etc. And then solid waste, co-products, things that you did not run the process primarily to make. Like when you make iron, you also produce slag. You don't run uh, a smelting process to make slag, but inevitably that gets made as well. And other kinds of releases. So this is the basic uh, you know, picture we have. And it starts with raw materials and goes down to recycling. So in more detail, um, life cycle assessment is basically a technique uh, to uh, assess environmental aspects and potential impacts uh, associated with a product, process or service. That's what we do right? as engineers and managers. We, are the, we provide society with products or processes, processes or services. And uh, each of these has certain environmental consequences and life cycle analysis helps us to assess them. So the first step is uh, to conduct an inventory. What kind of materials are needed to manufacture a pencil? How much energy is required for all of the steps involved in the process? So inputs are typically material and energy. And then you have environmental releases. We talked about solid waste, liquid residue, gaseous residue. So that's your inventory step. It can be a pretty painstaking uh, analysis to come up with a detailed inventory. The next step is once you know what materials and how much energy, you're trying to find out or estimate or evaluate the potential environmental impact. Right? So you know, if you're using energy, you use electrical energy. Well, how is electrical energy produced? Well, it's produced by burning coal, as an example. When you burn coal, there are environmental consequences. You're releasing carbon dioxide, but just not just that, right? Coal is mined. It's either an open pit mine or a deep shaft mine. You are rearranging Earth's face when you engage in mining. So the ecology is disrupted. So there are lots of environmental impacts. So that's what happens the next step. It's an impact analysis step for each of the inventory items, each input, each release, we try to ask ourselves, what are the environmental impacts? The last step is interpreting uh, what you have found out in the inventory and impact analysis steps. And then providing that in a form that is presentable to a decision maker so they can make better or more informed decisions. Now, 
life cycle analysis is important because it analyzes all stages of a product's cycle. You see, uh, environmental concern is not, not very new. We've had various levels of environmental concern over the last 30, 40 years. But in the past, these concerns were addressed within the walls of a factory, right? When you make, make a car, right? I mean, you are rolling, uh, you know, you're basically forming sheet metal to form the body panel. Uh, and so we ask ourselves, what are the environmental impacts of doing that? But wait a second, where do these sheets of metal come from? They come from a steel plant, right? And the steel plant basically gets iron from an iron plant. And the iron plant uh, processes iron ore that comes from a mining process. So there's a, you have to include all stages. And that's what life cycle analysis does. And once you make the car, we, we used to stop the analysis right there within the walls of the factory. But these cars have to be transported to various dealerships. And then they are used. So the transportation involves environmental impact. You have trucks, you have trains that is hauling the stuff. And so there is energy consumed. And then people use cars for whatever, five years, 10 years, 15, 50 years. What are the environmental impacts involved? So it includes all stages and uh, with the assumption that these stages are interdependent, meaning that one operation leads to the next. So one of the big advantages of LCA is it allows the estimation of the cumulative environmental impact. Cumulative because it's not just confined to the factory walls, what happens before all the way up to the cradle and what happens after the product leaves the factory floor to grave. So it's a cumulative environmental impact. It often includes things that are overlooked in a traditional analysis like material extraction, transportation, and ultimate disposal. What is the benefit to a decision maker? Well, by including all stages, uh, we are uh, able to better assess uh, comprehensively uh, all of the environmental impact involved with the use of a product or process. So the decision makers can effect uh, true trade-offs when it comes to product and process selection. So true trade-off versus pseudo uh, true trade-off where it's simplistic. For example, one can say, well, it's better to use electricity from nuclear plants than a coal-fired plant. Well, yes and no, because in a nuclear plant, there is no smoke, uh, there is no carbon dioxide release. So good, right? Yes. But ask yourself, what happens to the nu nuclear fuel? Uh, it still remains radioactive. We go to extraordinary lengths to bury them deep under the earth or in the ocean and have huge concrete structures built over them. Well, that's got to be taken into account too. If you don't, then it's not a true trade-off. It's simplistic to say nuclear energy is clean, coal is not. I'm not arguing for coal or for nuclear energy. I'm from neither lobby. I'm just suggesting that you need to start from cradle and go all the way up to the grave to compare apples to apples. Similarly, you know, uh, people would say um, electric cars are good for the environment. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, if you just consider the car alone, but guess what? Electric cars use electricity. Where does that electricity come from? Well, that comes from a nuclear plant or it comes from a coal-fired plant. Well, then, you know, you, you got to, you, you can't compare a traditional uh, gasoline-based Chevrolet versus Chevy Volt and say Chevy Volt is better because and that is simplistic. You have to ask yourself, where does the energy come from? And that's where the cradle part comes in. It comes from a coal-fired or nuclear power plant and those have new uh, consequences. So true trade-off. Now, why would why would somebody in business want to do an LCA? You know, we're not, we're not talking about uh, somebody who may be on the far left and uh, are chaining themselves to trees and so forth. If you're a businessman or woman, why would you want to do an LCA? Well, you would want to do an LCA because you want to reduce environmental impact and waste. If your product produces less waste, then there's money in your pocket. Likewise, uh, you want to reduce costs. How? If your process uses less energy, if your process uses less material, 
these are things you have to pay for, right? So if you have to pay for less energy and less material, then your profit margins will be more. So you reduce costs, you make more profit, and you can focus on product development, um, which means additional focus. Typically, our focus has been on the function or on the manufacturability or ease of use. Now it also includes environmental considerations, right? Uh, support marketing claims. You know, most people today would say, if you look at Starbucks, if you go to a Starbucks and pick a pamphlet, they talk about how their coffee beans come from farms uh, which are environment friendly. If you look, if you buy Horizon milk, right, they would talk about how that milk is made where, uh, you know, range, I don't know what the word is, cows that, you know, eat natural grass and are not fed hormones and so forth. Um, you, you look at ads for Tyson or whomever, you know, chicken, you know, these are range free, uh, uh, you know, chicken or eggs and so forth. Why are they saying that? Well, because they are concerned uh, about the environment that, that is in selling you the product, they're trying to tell you they're not hurting the environment. So uh, you just can't have a claim. Uh, you have to be able to back it up. An LCA can help you back up your claim. And it helps improve corporate image. So these are some reasons uh, why you want to implement a life cycle analysis. Now, life cycle analysis is a pretty lengthy process. It can be broken down into four key stages or uh, steps or phases. The first step, as it, with most uh, projects, is to define your goal and the scope. Right? If you have a very poorly defined goal, <clears throat> you can solve a problem that you're not able to define. Right? It's like a cat or dog chasing its tail. It'll go on and on and on. And you have to limit the scope. Uh, you know, if you don't set any boundaries, you know, it's a problem that's too big. The next step is to do an inventory analysis. We talked about, you know, doing a painstaking inventory of all input and output. The next step is to do an impact analysis for the identified inputs and outputs. What are the environmental impacts or potential environmental impacts? And the last step is to interpret. Okay, I've done uh, my inventory analysis, I've done my impact analysis. What does this tell me in relation to the goal I established earlier? Uh, does it help me go to a product or process solution that uh, helps me achieve my goal or does it take me further away? So that's that stage where we interpret and help decision makers use this stuff. Mm -hmm.